Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. Uh, this month I'd like to give you guys a little bit of information about how to approach animating a character who is dancing. Uh, this is one of the first uh, requested lectures that was in the forum and I thought I'd get to it because uh, I had a little bit of time at work and I wanted to animate a scene just get back into animating. I do a lot at the studio besides animating, so it's fun to just sit down and animate sometimes. Now, dance has a, a, a very, you know, a big history with animation. Pretty much all of the Disney features that had a song in them, uh, you know, the, the musical format of all the Disney masterpieces, um, in, included dance. Basically, the entire thing was like a song and dance, um, a film, a, you know, true musical. So, because we, we all basically get our cues from the Disney masters, it's important to know a little bit about dance. It's 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 a it's a good thing to have in your your bag of tricks. Now, there's there's some good news and some bad news. I'm not sure which to give you first. <laughs> I think, I think the, the, the good news is that um, animating dance is not as hard as you might think it is. It's just a few little tweaks to probably what you, if you just set out to do it, what you probably you know, did naturally. The bad news is that depending on the dance type that you're doing, especially, it basically comes 90% down to research and reference and just studying and studying and studying and studying. So that's not, that's actually, I mean, to some people that's not bad news. To some people that's, that's, that's great because they feel that they are empowered when they have something that they can just dive right into reference. To other people though, it, it, it's more fun to animate things that are a little bit more intuitive uh, Etc. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk right now just a little bit kind of like about the 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 kind of not the technicals the, the basically the the feeling behind animating a dance. When you're animating dance, it's almost as if you need to be as into the dance as into the rhythm and the story of the dance as you would be researching the character for a acting shot, an emotional scene in a film. So if you're the kind of person that hates dance, it's just going to come through in your, in your scene. And that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you, you can probably, you probably imagine that. But it's not only just that you need to be able to tolerate dance and put up with dance it's 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 more than that you, you the the more you are excited about and and into dance and music and rhythm and physicality the better you're going to do also if you dance yourself you're going to have like the difference is night and day you're going to have such uh, an easier time um, doing the dance. So that brings me to basically rule number one, which is anytime you are going to undertake any dance animation, you absolutely must, this is a requirement, get out of your chair. Uh, if you need to do it, you know, where no one can see you, fine, um, but dance it out. You have to because you are just giving yourself too much of a disadvantage having not tried that dance um, if, if you don't. So um, that's super important. I would say the second rule is this. When you're doing a dance that is basically of your own creation, it's not choreographed, it's not a it's not a, um, shall we say, uh, you know, technical dance. 
if it's just a character like excitedly dancing the way you would if someone said, hey, you just won a million dollars, you do a dance, right? Then you need to stay away from the cyclical, just like running things in cycles. I see a lot of that. And what I call that is clockwork. So you can't animate your character like, I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna go, you know, just like hands up and down on, on 20 frames, the head left and right on 10 frames, and the body, uh, you know, goes in a circle every 40 frames. So you got your body going like this, you got your hands going up and down like this, and then you got your head going like that. I see a lot of that kind of thing where basically, I mean, it's, just, it's literally clockwork. It's pieces moving in, not in, in, in the same phase, but on the same, um, on the same cycle, basically. There, there is a point where it, where it repeats and, and comes back around. So rule number two is no clockwork. All right, and that segues nicely into rule number three, which is every single move, every single step, always has to have the same kind of support from the fundamentals as everything else you've ever animated. So no dropping the fundamentals, no you know, forgetting about anticipation, no forgetting about follow through overshoot, posing, spacing, timing, uh, any of these things, just because you're in a dance. And, and, those, and, and, and that normally is the result of what I just called clockwork, is there's just things moving, you know, just ticking by, and it's not really actually the body moving, okay? Um, and I, I, I qualified that. I, I said basically that's that that's the rule for when you're you're talking about doing something that has, um, you know, that's of your invention. If you're going to do like the tango, then obviously you're going to you're going to be looking a lot closer to that video reference. Okay. Um, so those are, those are like my, my three top rules. And, and I'll give you a couple others as we go along. But basically, um, overall, animating dance is as intense a reference gathering and reference watching experience uh, as is you know, pretty much any of the other like realistic animation you can think of, like creature animation or like realistic creature effects or digit doubles for on, on uh, visual effects films, or anything like that, All right? But I would, again, I would say, if you are an animator at Sony and you animated Green Lantern, you know, in, 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 in the film that just came out, you definitely, you have the chops, you have the physicality, you have the body mechanics for sure. But if you animated a shot of, of a dance that's of your own invention and then you stood up and then you danced it out and just felt it and then animated the same shot again, it would be night and day. So you really have to take that into consideration. I, 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 I can't stress you know, rule number one more uh, than, than, you know, than that, really. So it'll be up to you if you, d if you decide to take those, those, uh, those pieces of advice. What I... So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at just a couple different styles of dance. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background on me, I used to dance... Um, all the time. I roomed uh, with a DJ when I first started my career in LA. Uh, my roommate was a DJ and I would go to uh, clubs and, and um, um, you know, uh, basically, you know, dance parties or whatever two or three nights out of the week. And it got to the point where I was actually thinking, I was considering um, actually studying dance because I was really into hip-hop and um, I actually 
Um, one of the places where my roommate used to DJ was this uh, place called Shelter in LA. I, it's since been bought and renamed, but I remember that the guys that were that choreographed and danced in uh, You Got Served and the first Step Up movie uh, danced there, and. Um, I used to watch them and I would learn from them and I'd talk to them, you know, when, you know, when we're dancing and uh, they, uh, they were encouraging me to, to start, you know, start studying dance and learn how and go to a studio and, and whatever. And um, actually, it was funny, I, I almost, I, I was making preparations to start doing that when um, I got recruited by Weta. So, um, I don't know. It wasn't for lack of passion in animation at all that I was looking at this, but it was just for love of dance that I that I was looking into that. So my my tastes are you know much more like modern, like hip hop. Um, I like I like jazz and contemporary and um, and those kinds of dances. I like it when it's when it's like picturesque. I don't like it when it's like super super symbolic like like when contemporary looks like a hula dance i don't like that but i've seen every single episode of so you think you can dance which is a tv show if you've never seen it you should check it out dvr that show it's awesome and um i'm just, I'm just a huge fan of dance basically so but let me just um let's just go through some reference and i'm going to talk, talk about uh, uh some things so let's say first you were you wanted to animate a tango. This uh, clip is from So You Think You Can Dance. And I have, I have the music, so we can listen to that as well. And um, so, let me, uh, so let me just play this and talk about some things that I would be looking at. Okay, right off the bat, this is kind of what I'm talking about. You see how they both lean down like this it is you can see the tension in their legs as they lean down clear it, it's crystal clear in front of your eyes right here it's not just them shifting forward and like their bodies just like going down if you were animating that you'd have to look so closely at how their 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 weight decelerates how they, they ease into that pose, but how much strength is in those legs. Right off the bat, this is, you know, this will take you a good hour to get, to get perfect. Dance is so hard to copy, um, but, you know, alas, all we have is the reference to, to, to support it, so we have to look closely. Let's, let's keep going. All right, same thing happened right there. What I want to call the attention to is when um, she starts taking steps back towards him. Um, first of all, look how when she spins out of this, her foot plants, and then there's a little bit of a plant right here, and then she shuffles her foot again. I think that's a detail that is really important to... To, to look at. Why? Because in the next move, when they duck down one more time, when they, when they dip really low in their, in their legs this time, it's, it's gorgeous, um, her center of gravity, she subconsciously, I'm sure, made that adjustment to her feet right there so that her foot would be just a little bit more underneath her center of gravity and she wouldn't fall over when she ducked down like that. Another thing I want to point out is when she's stepping towards him, look how she stays down in her, in her knees right here. And if you watch the arc of her, of her hips through screen, it takes a very, very gradual dip as she's stepping towards him. and then back up again. It's not this clunky, you know, step, step towards him. It's actually step down, step 
up. Now, all of these things that I'm pointing out, let me, let me qualify what we're doing right here just a little bit. All these things that I'm pointing out are the kinds of details that distinguish certain styles of dance from each other and are also subsequently, but not, not entirely, the details that will make it so that when you are creating a dance from reference, you'll be able to, you'll be able to break from what you're, what you're just your body mechanics and your physical animator mind is naturally going to just want to do, is going to gravitate towards, okay? Now, why do we want to resist that? Dance, and especially the very, uh, not rigid, but, uh, you know, the, the, the formal dances were created to have these rules so that they would be visually appealing. And as we go on in this, in this dance, you'll see what I'm talking about. In Argentine tango, see those leg kicks she does? In Argentine tango, much more than you know, even the other forms of tango, like, uh, like American tango, there is a whole lot of the kicks where the leg actually that bends at the knee and then the body turns back around and that momentum whips the leg back the other direction, okay? So like right here, she throws her leg up, but she's already pressing really hard against his body and swiveling her body back towards him and it, it whips her leg back, okay? And then she's going to do the same thing right here again. She's... She's letting her leg come back. She's letting the, the knee go, but she's already pushing. You can see it's very subtle, but if you watch like the line across her hips right here, it tilts on this frame, meaning all her weight just went onto this leg and she's really pushing the, the, the leg backwards. See, it comes back all the way around. In fact, it's enough to, to actually spin her out. You see that? Unbelievable. Beautiful. Okay, one thing I want to point out is that when he lifts her, the funny thing is, is that if you watch the arc of her body, it, it, it is like the opposite of a, of a bouncing ball. Again, we do so much in animation, like with the bouncing ball, that if you miss things like the, the grace and elegance and the, the, just the, the smooth arc of the body in something like the tango, you're going to miss the whole point. So hopefully you're getting an idea right now of how intense you have to be in your video reference, how close you have to watch it. And you, you can't fake it. You, you certainly can't fake the formal dances, any of the ballroom dances, tango, uh, salsa, samba, rumba, foxtrot, none of those. Um, Try to remember more, but I can't. I'm disappointed in myself because I do them on, on So You Think You Can Dance every week. Okay. And I picked, I picked this one to show you because it is so infinitely complex. All of this work that she's doing, just as we're framing through this, and you can find this on YouTube, by the way. Do you see all that? There's no way you could, first of all, there's absolutely no way you could like invent that in your mind. Do you see that? Unbelievable. But what's remarkable is if you just look at her, again, her arcs on her body, completely paranormal. And what you don't realize is this. 
you look at his hand up here, it's very stiff. But if you look at her arm, it is rock solid. Her elbow is hyperextended, and she is being lifted by his arm, mostly this one, but also being helped out by that arm. But she's basically being lifted and held up by this guy basically curling her with, it, with his um, bicep, and her arm is, is totally straight. Watch this little section one more time, and look not at her legs, but at the arc of her body and his arm as he assists her, and you'll see that, like, wow, that's actually... Just the arc on the body alone is something that is detailed enough to make it break from what I would decide to animate on my own and something that I have to get from the reference if I'm watching reference for this. You see that? No way you could invent that. And it's, it's so funny in, in tango, um, in, in almost all dances actually, um, but, but tango, uh, I guess especially, the, the man is supposed to make it look effortless to lift the woman. So it's kind of, kind of hidden in a way. And that's, that's some of the fun. That's some of the, the uh, you know, it's like the hidden treasures in your video reference. Look really closely at it and you'll, maybe you'll find something that um, other people might not. All right, so let's go to the uh, let's go to the just the last part. There's some insane lifts here. That's beautiful. What I love is this little move right there at the end. Is this how he swings her forward and then backwards? If you just look at this reversal on her spine, you know, oh, it's just it's just amazing. But also, you know, looking at if you look at his body, the interesting thing is again, he has to be so strong and so and so rigid and and there has to be so much strength. If you watch his body, look at him. Try to take her away. He is firmly planted in his knees, arm is totally straight, and when he swings her up, he's basically using his back, but also like basically kind of like this, this claw, it's so strong right there. One more time, just, just watch him and you'll see, it, it'll kind of betray how much strength you need to do this move. Watch him. And this guy, this, um, Brandon was one of the, the, best dancers on So You Think You Can Dance that they ever had. He had the unfortunate, he had the bad uh, luck of being on there with an amazing, um, you know, other contenders. So, all right, so we're already seeing how close you have to look at reference for, for a formal dance. And um, here's another one of Jeanette and Brandon as well. I loved this, this pairing, they were so good. Here's a uh, Wade Robson uh, jazz routine. Now, Wade Robson is a super famous choreographer um, he cho he's choreographed for for pretty much every single pop group that's that's ever ever been Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, Insync, whatever. And while you might not like their music, um, the the music videos and the dancers that go with them on tour, um, it's actually pretty inventive. But at any rate, this is a, a, a quick jazz routine. Let's just watch this and 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 see what we can point out.
Unbelievable. All right. Uh, why I love that so much is because it, it's kind of like they, they move almost like cartoon characters. Um, the nice part about jazz is that you can kind of uh, have the bigger characters uh, in, in, the, in the routines. Um, but there's also some really interesting physical things that are happening in the body. There's like crazy body mechanics that are happening right here. So first of all, it's really super cool that um, they're taking these big steps. These steps are very easy to animate, right? Super easy. But I love how when they're running, their hands go up and down like this. It's, it's just like, you know, it's character walk 101, you know? They're sneaking, you know, that's like such a, 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 an awesome sneak. So if, you're, if you want to animate a dance that's a little bit more playful, you can move your character to the rhythm the way that they're doing, and you can use the use the kind of the the fact that in animation we want everything to be a little bit overblown to your advantage with this style and i don't want to put too fine a point on the styles that that uh, i'm showing you here because it's not actually you're probably not going to get that told to you um, i know like on toy story though for instance uh, toy story 3 they did choreograph all of the dance but if you're if you are going to be you know if you're working professionally especially and they are going to bring choreographers in to kind of work the dance out for you before you animate then you're there's not going to be anything you can do you will not be able to get out of the amount of research that i've been talking about so far of course um and just ask carlos baena about that um i'm sure he'll agree but point i'm driving at is that when you are doing like every other part of dance, or even if you're doing like your own dance shot, um, or a, like a dance like in the middle of kind of like a, a just like a little scene, because you know you you you've heard, I can just make up a line here, like someone, I don't know, like I said, wins a lottery. It's like, hey, this is the winning ticket. It is. I won. I won. I won. I see way too much like clockwork in those kinds of things. I just see people going like, I won, I won, I won. And it doesn't really, it doesn't really feel good, okay? Um, I love this walk that they do. Amazing reference. And this next motion where they leap up in the air, I actually believe that their arms have like the majority to do with that momentum that they, they use to get off the ground. Check this out. See that, that motion that they just did when they're walking past each other right here? See, it's like a little frog leap, arms forward, there's a shudder in both of their bodies when their arms go forward and as straight as they can make their arms stick out, they still wiggle. And then a huge reversal in the spine, but check this out. Whoop. You see that? This little frog leaps. It's not just a, it doesn't just look cool. They're actually using their arms. And that's something that I like to emphasize anytime I'm animating uh, a dance because it's very cartoony. And this is one of the things where like, if you are free to explore a little bit more of a cartoony style, you should really put a point on. If you haven't seen the cartoony lectures, you should check them out. But um, just to kind of recap in terms of how it applies to dance, you can be, you can say so much more about the emotions of the character with cartoony choices than you can with just normal run-of-the-mill choices, realistic physics and body mechanics and whatever. So, like, like the fact that their arms are almost look like they're lifting them off the ground. If I was going to copy this into, into an animated scene, 
you know what I would do? I would, I would just like forget moving their legs at all. I would just put a little bit of torso and mostly shoulders and arms and I would make it as much as I could look like just the hands. It's like vroom, and like the body kind of stiff actually like comes up off the ground and then they move their arms again like that. One more time. And then up like that. So they're doing a lot in the body and of course their legs are are part, are part of eh, are a part of this mechanic that we're seeing in front of us, but that would be a point again that in animation those are the things you want to hone in on where it's an interesting dynamic. What a, a dynamic is on screen when there is a movement and a a change in the relationship of of the moving parts. So you know, um, well, I mean, let's just use this as an example. The, the arm, like taking a step and then like stopping and then using your arms to like make you bounce forward like a Goomba in Super Mario Brothers, like an amazing dynamic. So look for those kinds of things. And I love things that, so now this is not clockwork. This, th when they're taking steps, this is not clockwork because they're not just like cycling their bodies and just like, you know, 24 frames, 12 frames, you know? You know, they're not doing that. They're actually taking steps and there's weight on it and then a weight shift. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, if you go on to, all right, so there's a couple um, dances that are um, on So You Think You Can Dance. If you go on to YouTube, I'm sure you've seen this guy, if you've ever seen any dance at all. This is a guy named, uh, this is a guy named uh, Dave Elsewhere. I think that's his dancing name. I'm not, I don't think Elsewhere is actually his last name. And this guy is, he can uh, do the robot like no one, no one else in the world. And just practice. And uh, I've read this guy's story. He, he said that he used to just go into his room after school and just practice and practice and practice and just like look at himself in the mirror and just like just move and move and move and move and move. He just like basically didn't ever stop moving. And he did it because he saw how cool the kids who would break dance at lunch in his high school were treated. And he just wanted to be the best. He wanted to move in a way that no one else could. And he just practiced and practiced. And supposedly, like, there were, you know, the, all the kids gathered in the, uh, in the quad or whatever. And he went out and, and, you know, just did his routine. And he was, like, a huge, like, explosive, explosive success. He was, like, the coolest kid in, in, in school. And, um, you know, while I lament the necessity for, for that kind of motivation... Um, I do think that uh, this guy, just the way he moves and that he, he's the only one who can do it like this is just proof positive of, of the attitude and the, and the love of dance um, you know, that's out there that, that's possible. So, um, so we just watched it through once. But what I, would say, what I would just say about this is that the way that you'd have to go about doing this is all, almost rotomation because it's not just unintuitive the way he's moving, it's, it's counterintuitive. Our bodies, even if we could possibly imagine it, our bodies can't move like that. He's double jointed, he's extremely flexible, he's been, he's been seeing, you know, seeing his poses and seeing you know, like the effects of like, just the way he moves. Um, if it gets super complex like this, you just have to almost copy the reference. Um, this next one is another guy. Um, this guy is a popper and he does also isolation and I think some gliding. Um, isolation, is, isolation is different from, um, from the robot because what it basically is is when you can move one part of your body and, and not the others. Um, robot is more about like tension and release. 
So you'll see that like he can move his head or keep his head like completely still and his body is still moving. And look at that move. That is insane. I've I've never seen someone who can who can uh, do a wave in their in their hands as much as this guy. But here comes some sick isolation. If you watch his head, right here, you see that he's able to basically move any part of his body and and keep keep the rest of his body perfectly still. It was beautiful. Um, this was also on uh, So You Think You Can Dance. And then he just did a little bit of gliding right here. Watch his feet. So he did just a little bit of gliding. That, that's like gliding 101. So gliding is super, super hard. Um, I wanted to just uh, finish up this little, um, little reference you know, session that we're having right now um, talking about gliding. Probably the most attempted dance animation that I ever see is uh, Michael Jackson. People love to do Michael Jackson. And that's good and all, but Michael Jackson's moves are not like, are not the formal. They're not like the tangle, tangle, the what? Obviously, uh, obviously this guy's excited about getting his DVD uh, in the mail soon. <laughs> it's not like the tango. <clears throat> So you have to look at every single move much more like it is a full body gesture that's not being done to music. All right, so that's like rule number four. I said there was, you know, we're going to come across a, a few more rules. Uh, that would be like rule number four. When you are breaking down these moves, you need to basically treat them as separate moves with all of the fundamentals, yes, but also at almost as if there's, there's no music. Because only then will you, will you like free yourself from like this cycle and, and the clockwork and actually be like, okay, he needs to move this way and step and settle and, and then he's, okay, and then I can do the next step or whatever. Gliding is super hard because things like gliding and the moonwalk, uh, et cetera, um, it's a very interesting body mechanic test because basically the tip of your toe pushes your flat toe backwards and then you switch and then um, you basically just do that. So um, I actually have a um, moonwalk video here. Um, this is, these are all on, on YouTube. But as you can see, if you just look at this guy's feet, what you do is the weight is being put on that toe and he's moving backwards but he's pushing as hard as he can with his calf I'm sorry not his calf his quad up here ex pushing his his uh, planted foot forward and then switching here he does it right here and he's got a little bit of momentum which is good which makes it so that you can actually um, right when you switch your feet you have a little bit of momentum going for you, so you don't have to push so hard on, on the toe. All right. So this is a how to moonwalk uh, video on uh, YouTube, so you can, you can check this out. So let's look at it one more time. You see that? It actually makes a lot of sense when you start thinking about it. He's planting this toe and pushing, pushing really hard forward on it. And that makes it look like this, is, this foot is actually sliding backwards, but there's no weight on, on, on that sliding foot. Okay? So at any rate, um, uh, I just wanted to point that out, that... Um, that there are some mechanics and some moves that are super counterintuitive and, and you need to look super close at the, the reference and, but also know what is actually going on in the mechanics of the body in order to copy it. You'll never get any closer than that. Um,
And then this is a, just a hilarious video. Um, it's called Evolution of Dance. There's like three or four of them on YouTube already. And basically this guy goes through like 25 different dances, like super iconic dances, like the twist and um, let me see. Like that first one I think was actually uh, Elvis. And here's the twist. And basically just like shows you exactly how to do them. And again, the twist is not uh, clockwork. Clockwork is when you are completely disregarding all of the body mechanics and you're just making, making repetitive rhythmic movements. Okay, so this is, this is a, a lot different than that because it has, well basically a human can't really do clockwork. That's why it, that's why it looks so bad. Because when your animated character is just doing clockwork, um, it looks absolutely mechanical and, 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 and not human at all. We can't do it. So if you see this guy, he's just doing some in, just really embarrassingly dopey uh, moves. What song is that? Yeah, that's Um, what's interesting about what this guy uh, kind of illustrates in, in most of his dances is that the body can move at different speeds, and, but like every, every part of the body doesn't have to be moving at the same time as well. Um, so that's, that's something to, to note from uh, the dances that this guy does. <clears throat> um, so by now you're probably asking yourself, um, where do where do we start, Kenny? You're, you're showing us video reference. I, I you know I like video reference as much as anybody, but you know where where do we go from here? What are we supposed to be doing with this? I want to animate a dance. What should I do? Well, here's what you should do. Um, after finding all of the video reference that I've shown you already in this video, and also finding some new ones of your own, like on YouTube or Vimeo or whatever. I think you should make an animated scene, uh, a dance scene of your own creation before you decide to try to start um, copying a, uh, like a really formal dance like tango or, or, or something like that. Um, look, oh my God, look at this guy now. Jeez. Walk like an Egyptian, right? So, um, how, do you start, how do you start that scene? The way you start that scene is you need to start thinking about um, how you're going to avoid clockwork and what moves you want your character to do that are going to uh, make it so that you, you don't get caught up in that, uh, that trap of, of getting into clockwork. What I like to um, start with is just doing little weight shifts. The exercise I'm going to show you right now is really, really good just in general. You should just like practice this all the time no matter what. And what it'll give you is the confidence to always be um, able to do a weight shift. And what you'll find is that most of dance is weight shifts anyway. It's just rhythmical timed weight shifts. Okay, so if there's anything that you can um, put into your dance animations that um, that will make it seem better and better and better, it's it's always more weight. Okay, and I have a couple tricks as well that I'll show you um, when I start animating. You know the the little dance scene that I, I did for you guys. Um, uh, you know that that will help you along the way as well. One big one in the beginning in particular, and then um, a few throughout the process. Um, with this, with, with this endeavor, with with dance, um, what what's um, fundamental to remember is that when you're starting, you can't drop your workflow. And I, I don't say this to you guys. I never say this to try to impress you and make you think like, oh wow, Kenny, he's so cool. Um, but I animated this the shot that I'm going to show you in exactly three days. 
um, because you know I don't have any more time than that um, here at the studio. So and it wasn't even full days; it was like three six-hour days. So I spent about 18 hours um, on this shot, and I was able to get it to a pretty pretty decent level of polish. There's a lot I want to do on it, and I'm probably going to um, um, work on it a little bit you know, while uh, the, this video is encoding and uploading, because that takes a couple hours. So I'm probably going to work on it a little bit more. So the scene that you'll get on the site might look um, a little bit better than what I'm going to show you right now, but um, that is only possible through workflow. So if you, if you get daunted and you are you know, discouraged or scared or anything, the, the worst thing you can do is to drop your workflow and then just start diving head first, work super close you know, to your work and, and, um, and, and you'll, just, you'll just flounder and, and fail. When the, when the going gets tough, the, the, the tough go 10 times harder on workflow and, not, and, and disregard like, all the pressure to you know, break their workflow. So. Um, very important to remember. So let me let me show you the first exercise that um, that I want you to do here. So now this exercise is a good thing. This is not just for dance animation, by the way, but this is the definitely the first thing you want to do when you um, start the task of undertaking a dance. Um, and what we're, I'm basically going to do is I'm just going to get super good at keying a weight shift straight ahead, all right? And why do we need to do this? Is because um, in dance, it's a little bit hard to go pose to pose because of how much the character is going to be um, moving and, and shifting their weight. It's almost like, you know, you say that when you're doing acting shots, you have to do things um, you know, very pose to pose because you want to hit those strong silhouettes and you want to get those poses in there and all that stuff, all that great stuff. And when you do a super physical action, you got to keep straight ahead. Well, what if you're always moving because you're dancing, but there's also poses you have to hit. So again, what getting good at doing a very simple straight ahead weight shift uh, allows you to do is to hit those poses and not be afraid that you're going to be stuck um, with difficulty getting into and out of that pose uh, quickly. So, so you, know, you can pose with, you, fearlessly, knowing that uh, a weight shift into and out of that pose, pff, no problem at all. So basically, I'm just going to um, just basically just start setting some keys by just basically having the, the character you know, anticipate Actually, you know, we should probably pose him um, kind of on one, um, on one side here. And I'm just going to move his hips. You know, I'm not going to worry about his arms or his torso or anything like that. But let's pose. Let's pose everything right here. Okay. I'm just going to grab these controllers. Okay. Right. I'm just going to anticipate with the the hips just a little bit. I'm going to rotate. See, I'm rotating only on this keyframe right here. So no translation. Then if I do translation on a later keyframe like this, I already built in the overlap. And so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side in terms of the um, rotation. As you can see, it's rotating across, but it's rotating through the keyframe that I already set. Here's the rotate. As you can see, a little bit overdone. No big deal. Now I want him to actually take a step, so let's have him anticipate downwards as well. And then in the middle, which is a frame that doesn't even have any keys on it yet. Actually, let's not, may have him not take a step, just for simplicity's sake. But we are gonna have him change his foot position.
is going to come up. Rotate this out, almost like it's sliding. Just a little bit of anticipation on the hips as well, and let's just key this. Okay. Probably overdoing it a little bit with the uh, rotation still. Just going to scale it down. No big deal. And we're not overlapping enough with the also feels like it's playing every frame. No. Good. Oh, you know, I'm missing I'm missing some keyframes, that's why. Okay. Now everything is kind of piling up right now. Because I haven't done this pose to pose, I need to now start figuring out and looking really closely at the hips and the root as to how how and why um, everything that or sorry, how and when everything that is a moving very in a very overlap manner right now um, needs to actually come to a settle. I think that his motion from, from left to right is looking um, a little quick. So I'm actually gonna just, um, just delete that frame and just have it take a little bit longer. And you'll notice I'm not picking up the feet. I might do a little bit of a um, lift of the toe right here. And then have him put it, or lift the heel rather, and then have him put it down. But um, in, in in you know animation, especially you know student animation, I see so much. Um, the feet are always like lifting up. The feet do not have to lift up to um, to move. The, especially in dance. Oh my gosh, in dance especially. There is so much sliding feet and like rotating and spinning on like the ball or the heel of your foot. So it's another thing you need to look for when you're in, when you're animating your dances. Okay. So I'm going to keep on going here. I'm not going to take too much longer because watching somebody else animate is like watching paint dry. I know. Um, I'm going to see if this is yeah. So I'm just, what I what I do a lot of, and 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 you'll see this because my my shot, you know, I have the block version, and then I have you know the the polished version, and you'll see like there's so much that goes on between um, my blocking and my polish, and 90% of it is deleting um, because you know you have to key all of your controls like on the same frame, or you know you end up with more problems, more hassle than it's worth. Again, you know, all of this, like the rotations, they're all just like settling too quickly. Getting a little bit better. Okay, getting a little bit better. Um, I think the hips can be I think the hips don't need to be so uh, so overdone here. So I'm just going to straighten them out just a little bit and then I'm going to keep them a little bit flatter for longer. And then when he puts the weight on, I'm actually going to overshoot with the hips just a little bit. And then, see I went over just a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. All right. So 
I would work on that for like probably like another 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes max. All right. If you do enough of those, what is the benefit? Again, really quickly. Dance is such that there are these poses that we have to hit. So you kind of have to do a hybrid pose to pose and straight ahead method when you're animating dance. So you'll never find yourself out in the cold if you practice doing tons and tons and tons of weight shifts. Because in the end, what will end up happening is, lo and behold, you, ha you hit a pose and you need to get to the next one. How are you going to do it? You're just going to move them into it. And it's just going to look great. Okay? So that is the exercise. That is the, 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 the small skill that combined with a million other skills makes you a great animator. But like isolated on its own, being able to do a, um, a decent weight shift in like 5, 10 minutes is um, so advantageous. Not just with dance, but, but with dance um, particularly. Um, you'll see. So... I uh, decided to come up with a dancing shot. Okay, um, let me save this one real quick so that you get, uh, so you guys can download it. I'm just gonna call it weight shift. Okay. Now, if you look at mocking, um, there's not much of it here. Okay, but. Okay, so the first 160 frames were, were, were done. And um, you can now hear the, uh, the, the piece of music, okay? So let's, um, let's listen to the music first. Talk about happiness, that's what we're talking about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, awesome. Now, um, here's the first trick. I didn't want to give it away. Uh, I, thought it was, uh, I thought it was hidden before. But um, see this sphere? This sphere is only animated in Y. And if you look at the curve of this, um, this sphere's Y motion, oops, you'll see that I animated it in a very plateaued bouncing ball. And if we go view infinity, you'll see that the sphere is uh, repeating back and forth in infinity. So, why do I have that? Well, let's see what this sphere is doing. In fact, I only animate it in Y so that I can move it around. You'll see me when I'm working, I move this around all the time. Why? So that it can be right next to my character, or if I don't want to look at it, I can move it away. Or, you know, if he, see, he starts over here on the right, but then he, or sorry, he, then he takes a step to the left which is just a standard weight shift. You'll, you'll see, it's just like one of my weight shifts. I just threw it in there, okay? But this is super, super good visual feedback to do this. Animate a bouncing ball on the beat of your scene. Check it out. Talk about happiness, that's what we're talking about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, why do I do that? Because everything in... Everything in your scene is going to um, have rhythm to it. Does everything have to necessarily hit every single beat? No. But when you're talking about weight shifts and you want someone to really hit the, the weight, it's really helpful to have something that has the speed of a falling object right next to it. Now, why is that? Um, if, if I show you, here's my phone. If I, like, if I let go of my phone and it went like this and then accelerated and fell out, there, there's only one of two explanations at all for why that would happen. Either one, this is actually a phone that's like 200 feet across. It's like absolutely huge. And gravity on Earth, you know, you're just like this big. You're a tiny little thing compared to it. And it's actually accelerating as fast as it's supposed to be, but it's just absolutely huge and you're seeing it from far away. Or it's slow motion. But the, the, the acceleration, the curve of that is the same no matter what. So the point is this, if you're standing there and you want to do like a little dip, then the fastest you can possibly fall to Earth is, is with gravity. 
So if you have this bouncing ball in your scene at all times, and you have your character like spin around and like do a little dip, it's so nice to just have this little visual guide as to like what that is supposed to look like at all times. Another thing I'm going to point out now, and you'll see if I'm lying or not when, when you see the, the final scene, quote unquote final, but, but um, I didn't animate the Y curve, the, the translate Y of my, my root control, basically his body up and down. I did not animate it on a cycle. Absolutely 100% promise I did not animate it on a cycle. When you see the translate Y curve of my character um, in the final version, though, you'll see why I'm, I, I'm saying that right now. All right. So, so here's the um, scene. Here's how it, um, it turned out. Okay. Um, let, let's just watch him dance once. Talk about happiness, that's what we ain't talking about. Talk about happiness. Okay, so um, another advantage, and this is smaller, but if you have that sphere bouncing in scene, you can turn the sound off because sometimes it gets a little annoying to listen to like boom, 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 like over and over and over again. It's, it's, it, it's, um, it's uh, basically a metronome in your scene. So you can just keep the rhythm um, without having to listen to the sound. So he turns, he looks at us, he nods his head or bounces his head. And then as you'll see right here, all right, I want him to start like this, but then I wanted him to get into a really happy pose. Like he's doing like kind of like a, a, a swinging arm running dance. How do I get from this kind of straight up business-like pose to this, this pose? I just did a, a step and weight shift, all right? And this is all stepped keys. And when I splined this, it did not have um, a lot of breakdowns. Why? Because I had the main full body poses on, you, you can see right here, they're pretty much all on the, the beats. Boom, right here, see that? 96, boom, that's a key and he's dipping down. You see that? So see how that, that ball is such a good visual guide? Because the ball had a little bit more room than his waist did to, to fall across these like five frames. So see how nice it is to have just like that little visual cue? Anyway, so here's a key, a full body key on the beat. Boom, here's another one and he dipped down again. So I have, I have this rise and fall in his body, but I keyed it in there. These are all full body poses on the, on the rhythm, but it, it wasn't a cycle. I didn't take his Y curve and just move it up and down and up and down, and then just like animate a dance on top of that. You could, but it would probably feel like clockwork, okay? So um, let's just look at all these poses. See, he takes this weight shift, you know, I have him, basically overlap in the spine, built into that full body pose, takes a step, right arm, or sorry, left arm forward, right arm forward, left arm forward. Then I have him really deeply anticipate into his knees down here, and then swing his arms, you, as you can see right here. You know, this, the, the arms are basically over on his right side, screen left, and then boom, now they're over on his left side, uh, screen right, he spins around, and I've been planning for a while this spin on the ball of the foot right here as he comes around. And then, boom, lands and plants, okay? So where I went from here is after I got probably you know, maybe one breakdown in between each key pose on, on top of what is already here, maybe. Again, when you're, when you're confident that you can do like the weight shifts between the poses in dance, uh, it, it, it goes a lot quicker, way, 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 way quicker, okay? Um, 
And so this was only, this was only the first half of it. Um, I changed the second half. The first time, the, the first thing I, that I had was him doing a glide. Um, so basically, he just like um, shifts his foot and then like spreads his feet across like this and he glides across. And then he did like this kick line. And what I didn't like about that was that it didn't feel like the, um, the move that he chose to do was like the logical next move because he just did this spin and landed, which is really hard. And I wanted to do something that kind of acknowledged that. And so what I did was I turned that hard landing into the anticipation for a jump. And what that turned into, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you the, um, the end was, we're kind of getting long in time here. <laughs> I don't want this to be a two hour lecture. So I'm gonna show you the, uh, the final result here. Um, and you'll see what that turned into. That turned into a jump where um, I incorporated one of those things that I was talking about, which is a cartoony moment to actually embellish the dance and make it larger than life and feel, feel almost impossible. And the way I did that, you'll see, see here's him after the spin landing and he goes right into the anticipation and leaps up and clicks his heels together. But as you can see, his Y arc is already coming down. When he clicks his heels together, he gets another boost and he flies up. Okay, you see that? So this is one of those moments where it, it's a, a, you know, jumping and, and clicking your heels together, super fine, but why miss an opportunity to do something cartoony that actually makes him like, just feel happier when, when it's right in front of you. So that's what I did. Um, still to do on this shot is a lot of polish on the, the shoulders, neck, and head. Um, Bloke um, doesn't have um, some of the controls that I really, really need. He only has an, uh, an IK head to position the neck, which is very annoying. Um, so um, lesson learned. I probably would use a different rig for this in the future. And then in the beginning, what you'll see is I was, I didn't want him, he was just tapping his foot and then I was going to have him look at us and kind of be bobbing his head. It was just too small, too like static and, and, and boring. So I had him snap his fingers. But every single one of these, the way I keyed it was a key up here and then a key after he's snapped his fingers down here, you see, boop, the finger snaps and is down here. And this in his, what you're seeing in his hips and his, and his root is actually just another one of my vanilla weight shifts. Just basically moving him up and back and forward and down just a little bit and just the little bit of overlap that goes with that, okay? This is as close as clockwork that I ever want to go. All right, the rest you see um, actually does have, you know, the weight shifts, the body mechanics. It's looking at the pose, but it's also looking at how we're transitioning with bones and muscle through those poses and not just, you know, turning gears. Okay, so here's the, um, here's basically the final version. I'm going to work on it a little bit more um, while this is uploading, but, um, but check it out. Talk about happiness, that's what we're talking about. Okay, one more time. Let's get a little bit more exciting camera angle. Talk about happiness, that's what we're talking about. Hold on, hold on. Alright, and you see that I snuck the glide, the moonwalk, um, uh, into the end there. So I just want to point out a couple things. Uh, I'm going to polish this a little bit, uh, just for maybe 5-10 minutes in, in, in front of you, uh, but I want to point out a couple things um, first. First of all, on the, the little kick line dance that he does, one of the h toughest things and you can see I'm just having such trouble with the head here because of the, the lack of uh, FK neck. But one of the 
one of the important things that um, I, I kind of learned, I'd never really done um, something like this, was that the spine very quickly becomes over animated. In fact, I would say that that's like probably too much overlap on the spine right there. It's made worse by the this crazy ugly shape that the neck is creating going into the body right there. Um, but the the spine really has to be animated a lot more, um, just a little bit more, I would say stiff than than the way I have it. He's looking a little bit floppy. And I don't have enough hips. If you watch this section, I, I feel like the hips are letting me down a little bit. Let's watch it again. Okay. So I feel like, uh, let's see here. What section do I want to work on? Oh, I can't let that go. Okay, so uh, on this spin. So he spins, and I'm super happy with how it, it starts because it really feels like he swings his arm and torso and gets that momentum going. But it, for me, it kind of falls flat some, for some reason on the end here. I think I, can, I think I can fix this by doing just a little bit more with the, um, the relationship between the legs, the hips, and the, the torso. So let's see here. Um, also, still, um, I mean, if you look at the individual uh, graphs for, like here's the hips. Sure, there's some sections where I'm, I'm on twos. This is on ones right here. But this is, let's see, this is three. This is it's six. Uh, let's see, that's... Um, that's five frames. That's six frames. Um, if it weren't for that little one, that would be like 10 frames. But what's that? That's four frames. That's five frames. Oop, here we got another big one. That's seven frames. So, I mean, even though this is, you know, bordering on my, my polished scene, I still try to keep it nice and, 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 and open and editable. And whenever I do need to change a major section, I'm absolutely, without a doubt, um, walling off with keys and deleting the, the, the middle and redoing. I think one of the problems that I'm having with this section is that the foot doesn't feel like it's, it, it really weighs all that much. I like how it start, starts off pointed because that's the way you'd get that momentum. But I think by the end of the turn, it needs to be going a little bit like that. And maybe that's too big of a pose change from this previous one. So let's start it a little bit earlier. And the knee's hyperextended. So. Fix the pull vector. Looks like I have a pull vector key on ones right here. That's okay. I'm just trying to push the envelope a little bit with the extension of this, this foot. So now, all right, so I, I like how it's extended right here, but it needs to plant a little bit further to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that change in the graph editor for sure. Um, because there's just, you know, see, look, there's three keys right here. Rather than change all three of those keys, you know, I'm going to uh, just find a new position by just moving them like that. Yeah, see that already feels better. You see how it, there's a little bit more of a slap to it? Boom. In fact, probably maybe get a little bit of um, toe action on there as well. Lift the toe up a little bit. Boom. And maybe, let's just see what this looks like. Um, you know that I love to experiment. How much of a pain in my butt is it really going to be to take out that last, that last toe tap I just did right there in the end? And pff, none, right? But I don't know what it's going to look like unless I try it. Um, people 
that you know beginning animators have this this false notion that um, you know pros like when you're working on the job like every single thing you do it's like it's the right choice and you know and, and uh, uh, the best animator in the world like starts a scene and then just like charges forward perfectly towards the finished product absolutely not it's always going down roads and seeing what it looks like like wow I thought that would look better delete throw it all away you know that kind of thing so ooh I like it ooh I like that toe action ooh it's so nice I'm putting it everywhere now. I just want to sprinkle it in, this this awesome toe stuff. Now I don't like the, the, the it looks like he's wearing socks and everything is super floppy, but you know, I do like it to look nice. Yeah, see that feels nicer already. You'll notice here in the glide that I had his foot, like the last kick, we got some penetration there I need to fix. Um, the last kick was a little less, less of like a kick, like you'd kick a door down and a little bit more just like a, like a whipping of the leg so that it looked a little bit better when he swung his leg back immediately transitioning into that backwards step with with the um, with the moonwalking, um, and another thing that I wanted was Bloke to have like some stretch controls in his legs because um, I don't really ever like hyperextended legs, but I feel like I could get a little bit more range out of Bloke if he if he had those stretchy legs. But anyway, no use complaining. Um, so the glide section. Um, you'll also notice that I basically, the, the gag is, is that it, he's making it look like he's pushing himself off a wall and I, I switch to FK, or I switch from IK, uh, FK right here. Next time you see it, boom, now it's in IK, but um, it's, it's uh, hyperextending, so let's, uh, let's fix that. And you could be good, but you, you're not, no one's that good where like you can extend it absolutely perfectly right and make it look like it's not moving at all really all i need right now actually is just a breakdown right here i just need to keep that that hand in range a little bit more and what i don't like is how quickly it flops down right here so i'm just going to set a key before a, a key after and uh, and then delete this one see how the hand I knew that the position would still be the same, but now the hand actually falls a little bit more gradually as it comes down. So let's see that new hand as he pushes himself back on the glide. It actually feels a little bit more robotic. There's something wrong. You know what it is? I don't care how good you are. There's no way you're going to be able to make it look, like, look that good. Yeah, see, just that much, a little bit more movement, I think that'll look better. Yeah, here we go. Cool. So, so in three days, I was able to take those poses and uh, get, uh, you know, get this far. What you want to do is definitely start in step mode if that's the way your workflow is but if you do copy pairs or whatever that's fine as well and get the extremes on the rhythm of your um, of your scene so the you know dipping on the beat rising in between dipping on the beat just like these these motions everything and and let me show you remember I said I didn't animate the the hips or the the root of bishop, oh, bishop uh, bloke on a cycle. I want you to just take a look at the Y curve of this character in this scene. L take a look here, look, look what it turned into. 
So here's the beginning part where he's snapping his fingers. It grows and grows and grows. Then he does that turn, does the, the hand pumps, right? Spins around, anticipates, flies up in the air, clicks his heels, flies even higher, lands, does the kick line up and down and up and down, and then goes into the glide and then does a little hop to finish the um, scene. And you'll also notice that none of these are like the default. These are all weighted tangents. Um, most of them are broken here at the bottom, so I can make the, uh, the hit at the bottom a little sharper. Um, and it just, uh, it just it, it, I, th I, th I think that speaks for itself that the up and down motion of my character ended up looking like I animated it on a cycle. If you do the poses and you animate the weight shifts in between those poses, like I, I showed you a, a while ago, then it, it will end up looking like this. You'll, you'll get animation that looks like you did it on a cycle, even though it was straight ahead, okay? So, Um, the rise and fall of this character, it, you know, it's, it, it's clear, as, clear as day how much, uh, how important that is to the visual when you, um, when you put it next to the ball as well. So let's, let's watch it with the ball now. Talk about happiness, that's what we're talking about. Right? So, as you can see, you know what, what I want to do, actually probably the biggest change that you're going to see between this scene and the, the one that you guys actually get online, is I'm going to clean up the head for sure and, and fix some arcs here and there. But I'm also going to make the up and down even more apparent, especially in this section. You know, that's a little bit of a weak one for me. And as you'll see, it's also not directly on the beat. Okay, so if you want to simplify down your ideas for your, your dance, it, it, it's, it's easy to. What you need to um, first and foremost remember is that you, you should not be cl creating clockwork. Don't assemble cycles that, you know, semi-coincide on your character's controls and then, and then call that your, your, your dance. If your character is going to kick, like mine does these, um, these kicks right here. Let me turn off the sound. Mine does these kicks right here. Kick, kick, kick. You'll see that every single one of these steps has, has the weight over the center of gravity. He places his feet, the, the, the weight shifts. Everything happens according to if, if this wasn't even a dance uh, animation. So, um, first and foremost, first and foremost, no clockwork, all right? Absolutely not. And then next, as you're designing your, your, your shot, you need to realize that if you're doing a, if you're doing a, uh, like a tango or a samba or anything like that, you have to be up to your ears, up to your gills in reference, reference footage. Watch it with, without the sound, and then, and, and then with the sound, with the music, over and over, and look for those things that we looked for in the beginning of this lecture. Those things where the entire point of the move is to look like the, the, the dancers defying gravity. You'd miss it if you weren't looking close enough. Like when she jumps in the air, but she looks like she just like floats there. Her arm is stiff and you, you like it passes so quick, you'd never, ever, ever um, see it unless you were looking for it. But it's those hidden things that actually make a dance really exciting to animate, especially if you're animating a dance like um, those ones. So I wish it was a little bit more complex than watch video reference if you're animating one of those organized formal dances. When you are doing something more freestyle, 
of your own creation or like the kind of dance that amateurs actually do. Like if you win the lottery, you're going to do a dance. Again, rule number one, no clockwork, but also get really good at doing weight shifts. Use like the visual cue of a sphere to show you the actual ri like possible rise and fall of gravity in the scene and really hit those beats with poses. When those poses are all in, add a few breakdowns to define arcs, but then use all the practice that you've got doing those weight shifts to animate those weight shifts and those, those pivots on, on the center of gravity um, in between the poses. Animate them straight ahead, blend them between, um, then you're uh, just moving on to uh, clean up and polish and, and doing little things like, like I just did, like where I, I tilted the foot, I had it have a little bit more of a slap uh, landing, the stuff on the toes, that kind of stuff. And, and then you're good. All right. So animating dance, not as hard. You know, I had good news and I had bad news. The good news is it's not as hard as you think because if you have great body mechanics, you're probably 90% there anyway. You just have to avoid the trap of doing clockwork instead of dance. And the good news, or that was the good news. The bad news is, is that if it's a super, super like formal ballroom uh, class of dance, uh, you're gonna be doing a ton of reference gathering. I mean, and it makes sense though. I mean. Those dances would not be any fun to watch if you could animate it without having ever seen it, right? It takes people years and years to be able to dance these dances. It's only natural that it should take days and days of research to, to, to do it, right? So um, I'd like to see you guys' dance animations. Throw up your, um, well, don't throw up, but put your, uh, put your weight shifts into uh, the forum. Uh, I, I liked it when everyone was uh, uploading their little test scenes, their little short two second shots to the forum. Look great. Just do a weight shift. If you have 20 minutes tonight, just do a weight shift, just one weight shift. If you can't do it in 20 minutes, then that's great because you know that's the, that's the bar you need to get to. I need to do a perfect weight shift in 20 minutes. No big deal, right? Well, we'll see, give it a shot. And then once you have that, you can, you can charge forward into your dance animation knowing that with like the little trick, like the bouncing ball and really having those key poses hit the beats of the rhythm, but animating really solid weight in between those key poses straight ahead, uh, you, you almost can't go wrong. You'll have a lot of fun, all right? So I, I'm really excited about seeing some uh, new dance animations in the forums. Uh, keep on using the forum, uh, the, the folder in the forum called resource wish list because I am going to be looking to the uh, forums for some more lecture ideas for the future. Fill that up. Don't forget to send in ask video mail questions. I, uh, I can always use more of those and I just hope you're having a, a great time. I just want to uh, point out SIGGRAPH is next month. I'm going to be recording all the uh, talks I'm doing at SIGGRAPH. I'm going to compile them for you and you can um, you can take them and uh, and do what you will. But uh, I want to do that for everyone who can't make it to SIGGRAPH. Uh, we can still hang out. Okay. Thank you for your support. I'm having still just a blast with the site. Uh, I never want to stop. So, uh, so just keep it up and keep kicking butt and, and, and doing your thing. All right. Good luck with your work, and as always, rock on.